Welcome back to online worship here at Canopy Roads. My name is Miss Jenna, and I am looking forward to what God has in store for us today here uh, as we worship together. I am standing in the children's building, and it's not had children in it for a long time, and I cannot wait till we can be back in here together. But uh, today we're going to continue talking about determination. Now remember, determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. And so that's what we're going to continue talking about today. We have a new word up for today, and this is what our word up is. It's God gives you what you need to keep going. And so today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about is how to keep going and, and how God gives us what we need in order to continue to do that. So let's practice our word up here a couple times. You ready? Word up. God gives you what you need to keep going. Nice job. Let's try it one more time. This time I want you to say it nice and loud, even if you're sitting at home. It's okay. I want you to say it loud. Here we go. Word up. God gives you what you need to keep going. That's what we're going to talk about today as we look at some of Jesus's followers and what happened after Jesus had ascended to heaven. And now they were there to fulfill this command that he had given them to bring the gospel to the whole world, which kind of sounds like impossible to do the whole world. But we're going to look at uh, their lives and, and how they had to trust that God would help them to keep going and that he would give them what they need to keep going. So let's get ready to sing. We're going to be singing uh, some fun songs today that we introduced to you last week. So get ready. And this one is 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Here we go. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 First Thessalonians 5, 24. Do it, do it, he will surely do it. Do it, do it, he will surely do it. Do it, do it, he will surely do it. Do it, do it, he will surely do it. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. First Thessalonians 5, 24. First Thessalonians 5:24 He who calls you is faithful he will surely do it He who calls you is faithful he will surely do it Do it do it he will surely do it Do it do it he will surely do it Do it do it he will surely do it Do it do it he will surely do it Do it do it he will surely do it Hey everyone we're going to dive right into our lesson uh, as we talk about how God gives us what we need to keep going when we're uh, in a situation that seems really, really tough. And uh, we're going to start right where we left off last week, uh, where Jesus had gone to heaven and he had left his disciples with a commandment. They were supposed to take the good news of Jesus to the world. Now, remember, we talked about how that seemed like an impossible job. What a big job to have to tell the whole world about God, about Jesus. But the disciples knew and they remembered that God promised that he would send the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit would be coming to them in just a few days. And that's what they were holding on to as they thought about this command that, that Jesus had given them to be the ones to spread the good news to the world. And so that's where we're picking up today. And um, in the Old Testament, Jesus came to, to, I'm sorry, in the Old Testament, before Jesus came to the earth as a baby, God's people had a lot of different holidays and festivals and things that they would celebrate. And they would celebrate all the things that God had done for them. Well, in our lesson today, the, the people who were celebrating, uh, they were gathering together and they were celebrating something called Pentecost. And so they had gathered together. The Bible says that, that they were all in one group and they were, were celebrating this special holiday called Pentecost. And it had been a few days since Jesus had gone to heaven and they were waiting and waiting for that gift that God had promised. 
So we're going to look at Acts chapter 2 today in our, in our time together. And Acts is right after the Gospels. And Acts starts telling about what had happened after Jesus had uh, gone to heaven and the start of the church. Okay? And so we're going to look at Acts chapter 2. In Acts 2, this is what it, it tells us, okay? And remember that this book, I say it every week, that this is God's true word. He fills it with so many things that he wants us to know about him. True things that happen, so events, history, but also promises and things that we can hold on to and have, have trust in until Jesus comes back and we're with him one day. And it has information about things that we need to live our lives. And so this is the most important book that you could ever pick up and read. And so that's what we're going to use today as we do every week because that is what we're talking about is the truth, things that really happened. So in Acts chapter 2, this is, is what it says. And, and the verse is going to pop up on the screen so you can follow along there, okay? So this is what it says in Acts chapter 2. And suddenly, a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were staying. Mm, so this says that they were in a house, and there was noise outside that sounded like a storm, like rushing winds. Now, how many of you like storms? If you like storms, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> if you don't like storms, give me a thumbs down. Now, just a few weeks ago, we had a terrible tornado in this area. Maybe for you, that was a very frightening experience. For most people, storms can be kind of scary. Well, that's kind of what it sounded like outside of the house. It was this strong wind that was blowing and blowing. Let's listen to what it might have sounded like to the people in the house. Wow, can you imagine if you had been them? We kind of can because we recently experienced quite a crazy storm here. But that's what it was like for the believers uh, that were gathered together in the house. Now, there wasn't really a storm outside. But they heard something from heaven that sounded like a strong wind. And it filled the whole room where they had been gathered together. And after the believers heard that strong wind, a very strange thing happened. What do you think? Let's check the Bible out and see what it says. So in Acts 2, 3, and 4, the next two verses, it says, And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, the believers were filled with the Holy Spirit right at this moment. So you can see in the picture there that it was like little balls of fire sitting above their head. The Bible says uh, tongues of fire were above their heads. And, and it was that picture there that was showing that they were being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this gift they had been waiting for because Jesus promised that it was going to come and now it had arrived. And they were all filled with that special uh, promise and that, that gift that God had given. And God had sent his Holy Spirit to be their helper, just as Jesus had promised that. And this makes me think right now that the same Holy Spirit that filled the believers all those years ago is the same Holy Spirit that fills me today. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he's in you. You have the gift of the Holy Spirit. People that don't know Jesus as their Savior, they don't have the Holy Spirit. It is a gift for those who have put their full trust and faith in Jesus Christ. And so if that's you and you know him as your Savior, the Holy Spirit is your helper. He will help you say no to sin. Those things that are not right, he will help you to say no to them. He will give you 
wisdom when you need to make a decision. He will be there to comfort you when you're sad or worried or upset or, or having just a really hard time. The Holy Spirit does so many things for us. He's there to guide us and to help us. He's there to help us to finish what we start. Word up. God gives you what you need to keep going. He gives you that through the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is kind of like a cheerleader. He's helping you go and press on and finish what you've started. But he's there for other reasons, to comfort us, to, to be there in times of, of difficulty. Just He's there for so many reasons. And so if you know Jesus as your Savior, that is something that you should be thankful for. And you should thank God all the time for that special gift because that's something he's given to you. Well, the believers had received this same Holy Spirit. And so next they went out and they joined the crowds in Jerusalem for this, this special feast of, of Pentecost together. And they started telling people about Jesus and who he is and what he had done, just like he had told them to do before he went to heaven. So they told them all about the things that Jesus had just experienced, his death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, and all the wonderful things about him. Peter gathered everybody together and he started speaking to the crowd and they listened. And the Holy Spirit gave Peter all the words to speak. And God, through the Holy Spirit, that was speaking to Peter through Peter, uh, also allowed the, the people that were listening to understand. They were able to hear and understand everything he was saying. Peter reminded them of the amazing things that Jesus had done. And then it said, and then the Bible tells us um, that the people, they wanted to know what they should do next. And so this is what it says in Acts 2, verse 38. So much further down than where we were reading before. And this is what it says. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying right there is that he's telling the people to turn from their sin and to be baptized. And when they do that, they will receive that gift of the Holy Spirit, just like you have if you've believed in him, just like I have, and just like the disciples and the other believers there. And so that day, about 3,000 people believed in Jesus. Yay! And they were baptized. Wow, can you imagine being there and experiencing that and seeing 3,000 people believe in Jesus? That is a big deal, and I think it's awesome that Peter was the one that had a big part in that. The one that who, or the one that had denied Jesus and said he didn't know him when Jesus had been arrested. It's amazing how God used Peter to help that many people know about Jesus. Now, some of you kids here at Canopy Roads, you are like the people in our story that have put their faith in Jesus and have been baptized. And you've chosen to follow him just like those people. When you're baptized, it's not to forgive your sin. Getting baptized does not make you go to heaven. Getting baptized is a way that we show other people that we have chosen to follow Jesus and that our faith and our trust is in Jesus for salvation and the forgiveness of sin. So understand today that when the people got baptized, that was not what saved them from their sin. It was their belief in their heart that saved them. And that's the same for us today. Baptism is a picture of our faith and, and how we've chosen to turn our lives away from sin and follow after Jesus. Because of God's help through the Holy Spirit, Peter and the other believers were able to begin that big job of telling the whole world that they needed a savior and that Jesus was that savior. And a lot of the people had got to hear about Jesus before the disciples had left Jerusalem. Now the same Holy Spirit who helped them 
that day many years ago is still available to you and to me. Jesus made a way for us to have that gift of the Holy Spirit because Jesus died and was buried and came back to life. He came to pay for our sin. Sin are the things that we think, that we say, or that we do that break his laws or make him sad. And the Bible tells us that all of us have sin. There's not one person in the world that is without it. And our punishment means that we're separated from God forever and there is no way to have relationship with God if Jesus did not die. He had to do that. And so Jesus came as a baby. He grew up. He was perfect. Never sinned one time in his life. He was perfect. He is God the Son, holy. And when he was a man, he allowed these Roman soldiers to take him and whip him and beat him and treat him terribly. And they nailed him to a cross and he gave his blood on that cross. And because Jesus gave his blood, you and I can have our sins wiped away and forgiven. And we can have a relationship with God and have that gift of the Holy Spirit and have life forever with God on this earth and in heaven. And maybe you're somebody here today that doesn't know Jesus as your savior. He wants you to accept him and to believe in him. Acts 16, 31, the same book of the Bible that we read from today, just a few chapters later says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. To believe means to trust. Trust completely that what Jesus did, he did for you. Without a doubt in your heart, if you believe that, he promises you'll be saved. You will be saved from permanent, forever separation from God. And you will get to have a life with him now and later in heaven. I encourage you to talk to someone about that. If that is not a choice that you have ever made, turn to a trusted adult that you live with or someone that you know and ask those questions. You can believe in Jesus right now today, but Jesus is waiting for you to be the one to ask him. Maybe you're here and you have believed in Jesus to forgive your sin. You are going to be in heaven with him and your life on this earth right now, Jesus is a part of it because you've trusted him. You have the Holy Spirit. Then word up, God gives you what you need to keep going. Maybe uh, you're going through something really difficult right now. Maybe your online school is so hard. It's not the same. You wish that your teacher was right there in person to teach you. Maybe some of the things that you have, to, you have to learn, you're having a hard time understanding because it almost feels like you're having to kind of teach yourself or you're having to rely on your mom and dad to teach you. Or maybe um, it's something else. Maybe somebody that you love and that you care about is sick and you're worried about them. And there are days where you just feel like you can't, you know, ever get over your sadness. You can trust that he will help you through the Holy Spirit. He'll help you and encourage you to keep going. You can have determination to keep going and to finish what you've started and, and what you're going through. You can do that. So let's pray and then we will move on to the next thing, okay? Dear Lord, thank you so much for this example, this story that reminds us of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for that special gift for those who've believed. I pray for the boys and girls watching that know they're going to heaven because they've believed in you, that they would remember they have the Holy Spirit to help them to keep going when things are hard. For the boys and girls watching today who may not know you as their Savior, Lord, I pray that you would make their, their minds and their hearts um, be thinking about this and that they would ask those questions, help them to know that they need you, that there's no other way to heaven but through you. I pray that you would help us this week to, to just remember what we've learned today. And, and we love you. We thank you for all the many things you do for us that are gifts and blessings because there's so many ways you bless us. We ask this in your name, amen. The Bible, it's 66 books of history 
stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 41. The room was crowded. Over 100 followers of Jesus gathered, sat on the floor, or knelt to pray. Peter, always quick to take charge, may have led them. Lord, you told us to wait in Jerusalem. You promised to send your Holy Spirit. Now, just before, Jesus had gathered his closest friends at the Mount of Olives and instructed them to tell everyone about him, from Jerusalem to every nation on earth. But then, right before their eyes, he had been taken up to heaven. You've given us a huge job. We don't know how to do it when you're not here with us. So please, help us. The room stilled as everyone waited, even though they weren't exactly sure what they were waiting for. James and John may have been near a window. Getting windy out there. I'll just close the shutters. I don't think that sound is outside. Uh, everyone, stay calm. As the sound, like wind, rose even higher, a burst of light appeared in the center of the room. It flickered like a fireball, breaking into individual flames. What on earth? I don't think it's from Earth. As the group watched, transfixed, the flames separated and skimmed out until a tongue of fire stood over the head of each believer in the room. Is this? It must be. God's Holy Spirit. As the Spirit of God filled the room and the heart of each believer, something even more incredible happened. Soon, the believers realized what was going on. God has given us the power to speak other languages. Immediately, the believers went out to join the crowds who had gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Now, these Jews traveled to Jerusalem from many regions and countries where a variety of languages were spoken, so they were shocked to hear the believers talking about Jesus in words they could understand, and each believer responded in their own language. Aren't these people from Galilee? Yes, so how do we hear them in our own native languages? We've come from all over. I've met people here from Parthia, Mesopotamia, Asia, Egypt, Libya. But these Galileans are talking about God's wonders in our languages. What does it mean? I think it means they're a little loopy. Loopy? One fish short of a lunch, if you know what I mean. Peter heard the doubters in the crowd, so he gathered the rest of the disciples and made his way up to the very front. My fellow Jews, hey, people! Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. Long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over. You nailed him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. The crowd listened as the Holy Spirit gave Peter the words to say and helped them understand. Jesus has received the Holy Spirit from the Father. This is what God had promised. It is Jesus who has poured out what you now see and hear. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. Many people were deeply moved by the words Peter had spoken. So what do we do now? All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I... I want to be baptized. Me too. Me three. Then let's get started. That day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were baptized. With the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter and the disciples were already beginning the big job of telling every nation on earth about Jesus, even before they left Jerusalem.
can be kind and show care because you direct me Lord you direct me Lord I can be confident and I can be content because you love me so courageously I'll go for I know That's all we have for today. I hope that you enjoyed online worship this morning. And be sure to like this video, comment below, share it. Invite your friends that are kids to watch with us. Um, we would love to have other kids watch along with us, maybe that don't come to Canopy Roads. And, and then when all of this is over and we can come back to church, we'd love to have them join us here in the building. That would be so much fun to have them here. And maybe... They get connected with us here because you shared this video and they watched it in their home. So I encourage you to do that. It is a way to be a missionary and to share the good news like the disciples. Um, that, that is one way that you can do that this week. And so uh, we hope to see you next week online. And I hope that you guys have a stellar week. Bye.